Alaska, one candidate for governor is looking out for the farmers and ranchers and answering the call to serve his state. Watch this. A new day is dawning in Nebraska. Through faith, hard work, and ingenuity, the Cornhusker spirit is stronger than ever. Charles W. Herbster has that Nebraska spirit in his DNA. He built a business here, defended our shared values, and when President Trump asked him to serve, he answered the call. The same call to service that drives him now. Nebraska values, Nebraska strong. Charles W. Herbster for governor. The start of something great. Charles W. Herbster joins us now to discuss his campaign. I was happy to do the voiceover for him there. I'm just kidding. That was not me at all. But that was a brilliant voiceover that he has done there for his campaign. Uh, Charles, good to see you. How you doing? Sean, it is great to see you and be with you this morning. I love Newsmax and I love you and Emma and everything that you're doing on a daily basis. Well, listen, that, that means a lot to us. It really does. We're just trying to have an open conversation every single day, every single morning. Uh, and one of those, that's what you're having as well there in your state. Um, tell me why, why you chose uh, to, to run for governor. I mean, there must have been something that set you up that said, hey, look, I've got to get in this race. What was it? You know, I would just say, Sean, that uh, I'm running for governor of Nebraska because I don't think there's ever been a time in my lifetime where it's more important for us to protect our liberties and protect what's being taught in the school systems to our children and all the things that we've seen happen just in the last 140 or 50 days. Um, we're doing everything we can, it appears to me, nationwide to teach our children what's bad about America, not what's good about America. We're trying to wipe away all of our holidays. We're trying to take away the freedom and the liberty that our forefathers fought for. And we're just a few days away from celebrating America's 245th anniversary as the freest greatest country on the face of the earth. You know, one of the things in your campaign there you highlight, I, obviously the biggest part would be, I, I see farmers and ranchers. Why is that? What needs to be done there? Well, our farmers and ranchers, certainly in Nebraska and all across the country, are extremely important. But here in Nebraska, we're agriculture, we're manufacturing. And so we need to do everything possible to protect the freedoms, continue to not deregulate our farmers and our ranchers, regulate them out of business. So we need to protect them, to protect their freedom and their liberties to produce crops, not only for Nebraska, but for the United States and for the entire world. You know, America is a huge part of feeding the world. You know, some of the things that a lot of states are facing, some of the issues that a lot of the states are face, facing happen to be with uh, school children, as you know. It, it, it is a big conversation of what's being taught in schools, uh, making children wear masks in school, even outside, during recess, and teaching kids what is critical race theory. You've seen school boards, parents teaching out or speaking out rather against that kind of teaching. If you are faced with those issues, do you have a stance on any of that? I absolutely do. First of all, I'd share with you, as governor of this state, there is no room for critical race theory, period. No room for that in the education system. I'm going to take a hard stance at that, as other governors have across this country. I really support the fact that Governor Ricketts here in Nebraska has taken a stand against that. I totally agree with the stand that he's taken. So there's no place for that in Nebraska. When it comes to the vaccines, I would just share with you that the the vaccine is a decision between you and your medical professional. That should not be a decision where pressure creates you to do something that you don't feel comfortable with. From a political realm, obviously, you're no stranger to seeing this. It, 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 state by state, there are folks that feel the way that you do. Florida, DeSantis, Abbott in Texas and others uh, that want to leave it there. But if you go to other states like California and New York, they essentially have vaccine passports. New York has an app for it. California has a website for it. What do you say to that and how did this become so partisan? Well, I'm just going to share with you in Nebraska as governor, uh, we are not going to legit legitimize passports for vaccines. I think that's ridiculous. That again takes away our liberty and our freedoms. All right. Um, we, real quick before you go, final response to you on this. Um, President Biden wants to have 70 percent of Americans vaccinated by July 4th. A report just came out just moments ago saying that the White House is expected to say that only those 30 years 
years old and over are 70% vaccinated, but anyone younger than that, they're not going to meet their goal is the point on July 4th. Um, your thoughts on that? I can just say this. It's amazing that he can have a fireworks display and show on the 4th in Washington, D.C., and our neighboring governor to the north of us in South Dakota, Governor Kristi Noem, cannot have a celebration at Mount Rushmore. So, again, all the things that are taking place with employers trying to entice people to do something and take the vaccine, giving them cash, giving them time off, all the various things that we see advertised across the country, again, I think that's a true breach against true Americanism and the freedoms and the liberties that our our forefathers fought for us again we get ready to celebrate the fourth of july well if anyone watching uh, there is one of your choices that is charles w herbser joining us live on the national report charles good to see you thanks for watching by the way we do appreciate you sean thank you so much and looking forward to be on with you again absolutely we'll have you back take care all right for reaction now we'll bring in our panelists for today today we have hal lambert founder and CEO of Point Bridge Capital and former Ted Cruz National Finance Chair. Scott Walker is joining us, former governor of Wisconsin. Uh, governor Walker, obviously I'd have to go to you first on this. This is a gubernatorial candidate there in Nebraska. What do you think about his policies? Well, it totally makes sense. When you talk about freedom, uh, that's really what's at stake. You alluded to this in the last question about the differences between places like Florida, Texas, South Dakota versus radical states like New York, New Jersey, and California, where they've really shown us what they're interested in is control, control of the people. Uh, those other states, and certainly would be my point of view, putting our faith in freedom. Uh, certainly he was talking about that in Nebraska as well. And that's the big contrast. It's why you've seen better results, not only economically, but even from a health standpoint in states that put their faith in the American people versus those who think they know it all and really are about control and power. That's going to be the big contrast going forward. And I think that's only going to further divide uh, this country, uh, uh, not just politically, but, but even culturally going forward. We've got to bridge the gap and get people together and, and really support freedom. Hal Lambert, also the uh, gubernatorial candidate there, coming out in strongly against CRT in our schools, amongst other things. Yeah, that's a hot issue, and, and he's right, in, right on topic with that, and, and he's correct. Uh, it's, it's a very negative uh, view of the world. It's a negative view of our country, uh, and, it, and it's right straight to Marxism. I mean, you have the oppressors versus the oppressed, uh, which is just the the po proletariat versus the bourgeois, which was the Marxism version of it, and they're dividing the country based on race. Uh, our race relations have never been worse in this country. If you look back at the Pew Research polls, people right now, 46 percent of whites think that race relations are negative and th uh, are, are not positive, and 36 percent of blacks. So it's, it's, at, a, it's at a low. Uh, and, and just back in 2013, those numbers were almost double uh, on the positive side. So it's not helping the country at all. Uh, it's actually dividing the country. All right, we'll leave it right there. But they are our panelists for this entire hour. Pleased to have Hal Lambert, Scott Walker. Stick around. A lot more news to cover with you coming up.